Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff you know, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. All right, 2004 Subaru Outback H6, uh, six-cylinder engine. A couple of ways to do the spark plugs, as I've seen on the YouTuber. We got from below. This is an example here. We got a quarter-inch ratchet and a 12-millimeter socket to take the uh, bolts out of the spark plug uh, coil here. Got three coils on each side, of course. So we got about two and a quarter inches down to about two inches there, the gap on both sides. And that's what you're looking at, as you've maybe seen, or hopefully this is your first video. A little tabs here to push and release the uh, coil connector. I'm going to summarize a little bit. Here's a nice 14 millimeter bolt here and a 14 millimeter bolt here. Two engine mounts and then you can put a block of wood and jack up the engine here and do it from above. I think that's going to be more spacious for you. It might involve taking more things apart. So there's a cover here. Got some 12 millimeter bolts along the edge here, two back here, and then there's one up here as well, a 10 millimeter bolt on this side, and a 10 millimeter bolt on this side, I've already taken the shield off, seems to be missing some pieces, it has little fingers here so it won't really fall on you. So you may not have all these pieces here, but that's basically it for doing it from below, which you can do it from below, but now we're going to go uh, do most of the stuff from up top and I'll give you some close-ups of some items here. So I got a 14 millimeter and a long handled 3 8 ratchet. I did break it loose already, but take that 14 millimeter dot off and you see it has a guide pin there too as well when you want to drop when it drops back into place Let's really have good luck jacking the engine up and uh, when I need to and dropping it right back into place so don't worry too much about washer and the nut So I'm done doing one from below. This bolt can stay in the coil. You can twist it out. This is pretty soft and flexible. So you can just drop it down like I did and then you might be able to have uh, better luck getting to this connector right here. push on the tab on the top right here and it should release it but trying to get two hands up there makes it kind of difficult
pretty nice setup there. Well, I did end up using a screwdriver, a screwdriver to get in here and pry it loose. So now you have access apparently to uh, one hole. Alright, so I'm using a, from below, I'm using a 3 inch extension and a spark plug socket. And of course a uh, 3 8 ratchet to get to the spark plug number in the front. So here we are. So here we are, I got a front plug. Got it on there. I have some concerns about uh, getting the spark plug out when it's still in the spark in the spark plug socket. If you go up, you can uh, get the spark plug out, it looks like. Ooh. Spark plug is out from below with this set up. It's certainly going to be a little tighter when you're working on the back plugs when the uh, space is just a little bit narrower. I think I prefer to do it from up top. I did start taking stuff off from above. 10 millimeter bolts here. Two bolts here. Eight millimeter, five sixteenths. A couple fingers, fit in these grooves here, air filter out. Twelve millimeter bolt, twelve millimeter bolt. We'll take this out.
Now we have kind of decent access. Let's give this uh, engine a little jack up. Some people do them from below and some people do them from above, so just kind of doing both. So I didn't get as much a nice clearance as I thought I might from here, but still I think I much prefer this uh, open space up here using a swivel for this job here. I'm going to use a quarter inch screw gun, quarter inch swivel and an extension here to get the coil, coil bolts out a little ways. You can certainly just probably just use a swivel and a 12 and a millimeter socket if you have that. Number two just fell right out. I just take that, just unscrew that 12 millimeter bolt till it really kind of flops around. It's probably a good. Uh, sign it's actually loose. <clears throat> Still pretty tricky to pull these out with just a couple fingers. going towards the front with this. Can hang on to them, they drop down the bottom. So I'm using a spark plug socket, probably a two inch extension, and a swivel, and a long extension.
one reason I would jack up the engine to do this job is because I like to minimize my angle for my swivel. If this engine is down in its regular spot, it might be a little more angled. If I jack it up, I can save myself a little bit of angle here. just makes it easier to work and not so much crazy wobbling around. So that would be a reason that I would jack up this engine to do this job. Even though you could do it probably without it, I just like a less angle here. So that is removing the three spark plugs on the passenger side. We've got our plugs here, putting in NGK Iridiums LFR6AIX-11. Manual says PLFR6A-11. Spark plug gap is 0 0.039, a point is 0 0.043, and 15 pounds of foot torque for torquing the spark plug is what it says. You can use a gapper, different styles. You want to be careful with the iridium and platinum. They can, can be damaged and shorten the life, so we're just going to be careful. Looks like we're at 40. Sounds pretty good to me. 40. You need to open it up. You can use this hole here and open up like that. Maybe tap it on the surface to shorten the gap, make it smaller. We'll just check our plugs. So they're all about 40 thousandths, which is good enough within the spec there. So that's uh, checking and gapping your plugs as needed. You want to start these all by hand. You don't want to be cross-threading anything. So, and if you have access to air and, and an air blower, it's best to uh, turn the spark plug out a turn or two, the old one, and blow some compressed air in there and get any debris out of there. Although usually with coils, they do a great job of protecting the hole from any dirt and debris. Started by hand, ratchet it in. And this is this is where I don't like the excessive angle on the uh, swivel. right on the box, it's a little bright, but it shows you, basically you turn it in by hand and then once it hits the bottom, you turn it, what, a half to two thirds of a turn. That's what the box says. There's 15 foot-pounds according to my torque wrench. A 
We'll do the same for the other two over here and then we'll go over to the driver's side. And uh, some people will take out the battery, 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter nut here, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. There's a nice handle on it. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter for the washer jug. A couple uh, connectors and of course washer fluid tubes. I think you can maybe just take this out and uh, do the job without taking the battery out. You take the battery out, you can lose your radio memory and if you have some security issues, that cause more problems maybe. So that's the overview on this side. Made some uh, little things so I don't lose all the washer fluid. Connectors. Squeeze on this side whoosh, to release it. This one, you got to squeeze on this side, I think, to release it. Squeeze, release, washer fluids, nozzle, spray, liquid stuff here. Now we have a uh, decent access to the coils. I don't see any security light on the radio, so I'm going to go ahead and take the battery out. Very spacious now. That's how that operates. And I do put something called dielectric grease in here, in here. I think it helps not only in sealing and protecting from water, etc., but I think it also helps uh, take the coils back off. Once you have to do this in another 100,000 miles, it keeps the coil boot from sticking to the spark plug. I think that's beneficial.
that one was not unplugged, so I turned it so I could get it unplugged. Mm -hmm. A very tight fit going up. So just starting uh, number one by hand, here's what I'm doing. Standing up's a little easier on my back at times. So after the tune-up, it still died? Oh yeah. Okay. It's going to. Just using a little snap-on quarter-inch gun on that. Once you break them loose, you could even consider using some kind of an air tool or electric tool.
and try to make sure that the spark plug boot is actually going on the spark plug. Of course you can't see it, but that went on really nice and easy compared to the other times I was trying to push. So, you know, if you're having, if it doesn't push on and really you stay on there, and you're really fighting it, you might not be actually on the spark plug. Make sure they all kind of snap into place and don't fall off. So, that is uh, spark plug replacement on your six cylinder Subaru. I almost recommend doing from above and from below, especially trying to get maybe get those rear coils in and out. Very tight fit from above, I think from below it's going to be easier for those rear coils. Certainly up to you. Hope I've shown you enough to uh, help you make a decision. You can do it apparently from uh, both sides, below and above, but this is just a little more spacious, I think, and I'd go that route if I had a Saturday to do it. Take your time.
Here the engine did fall right back into place nicely, so we can torque down the engine mounts. So uh, I think the only torque spec I found for engine mounts where engine mounting was 25 foot-pounds. All I can say is just make sure it's tight. I'm sure you'll be fine. You'll see here where's where the fingers grab onto to keep this shield from falling down right here. And we'll tighten those down. And it should be all back together. Good luck to you.